Today's episode of the Project Archie Robot series is made possible through the support of Crazy Joe and dozens of other people just like you on Patreon. If you want to get into the secret stuff, if you want to get involved, if you want to help support the series, check out the links below in the description and see all the cool things that you can do to be a part of all of this. Thank you guys for helping out. Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome back to the shop. I'm here today with my very good friend, Onos. How you doing? Not too shabby. How you welcome doing, man? To the weird. <laughs> so, we, it's been a minute since we've done any Project Archie videos. And you want to stop by today and do a video. You're going to start seeing him on Mondays. Like, I have a feeling this is going to be a thing. And he's an electronics guy. And I'm not, but I'm learning. Oh, we all I can there. thought her. Hmm. Yeah. So, we did 20 of the robot videos. And these are really expensive videos to produce. Right. So, I did 20 of these and we had to shut down the shop for a few weeks because remodeling construction. There's still <laughs> conduit on the floor. Um, but we had to fill this room and use it as a buffer room while we cleaned a bunch of stuff. But we're back. The room is relatively not filled with stuff. I wouldn't say it's clean yet, but it's not full of crap. It's easier to get around. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I can make a robot video now because a lot of people have been freaking out about robot videos. So I got an easy one. This is the J3 spindle drive sprocket. Okay. It doesn't have any holes in it. Ah, so we have to drill it, tap it, and get it ready for a C face. Yeah, for a it's, cut it shaft. just it 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 goes on that shaft, um, which we'll get a look at in a minute. But all we gotta do is drill and tap this twice at ninety degrees off. Now it's okay because I got a plan. I don't have a drill press in here, so I needed a kitty sized drill press for in here. So I got I got me the best craptacular cast iron vise. Um, this is actually not bad. This is a Bessie. Okay. So that's a decent brand of vice. Um, it's not like a Kurt or something like that, but I'm not big enough to pick up an eight Kurt. pound Kurt. Yeah. yeah. So I got this like Home Depot. Okay, a little okay. best. This is great little drill press vice. It's good. And I got a great little drill press. It's great. Except for one thing. It doesn't fit the bit. No. You can't fit a number 29 drill bit in a Dremel. Guess how I learned this <laughs> 10 minutes ago while setting up for the video. But I got a little toy Dremel drill press, so that's cool. I wonder um, if they make collets bigger so we could use that. Well, it won't fit up the, like... Oh, it won't fit into the throat of the drive shaft. Yeah, there's, we've got collets in a variety of fruit flavors. Right. But the, the shaft... Ah. Uh. But it's drill bit. Like, I could just put the thing in there and just run a drill bit. Like, put the drill bit in the vise. And, <laughs> and I mean, it might work. But what I'm going to do is we're going free range. Okay. Okay. So I've got a drill bit. This is a number 29 drill bit. We have a tap. Let me make sure I got the right tap number. This is a 3.3 uh, a millimeter number 29 drill, and we're using a four millimeter tap. Okay. All right. Um, so we're gonna do we're gonna do some basics of drilling and tapping. I don't have any tap magic here, but I'm doing two holes, and they're small. So I'm gonna use three and one oil because as long as you're lubricated, should be all right. I think. So since we're drilling on a rounder, are we going to file a little flat on there to make life easier? Do you want it? I think we should. Okay. I like that idea. I'll even turn it this way so that the camera there can see our hot drill bit insertion action. I'm going to take the soft jaws out of the vise because this is a, a steel sprocket and I don't, I'm not worried about scratching it or something. I have a file. Oh. Which which do you prefer, this big bastard or this little one? Which one's more? This which one's, one's got sharper? a flat edge. So does that one? Yeah, but this has a little flat edge, like this way. Ah. Uh, it doesn't really matter for this, does it? No, not really. Given that this has more teeth. Yeah. There, you want to do it? Yep. Go nuts. Give me a flat spot, sir. So we got to do this twice, 90 degrees off. Looks like a flat. Oh, you're smooth. All right. So we're going to go high speed. And I got my safety squints, thanks to Avatech. And I don't have like a real drill press at the moment. I have a real drill press. Just a little small. No, I have like a real drill press, but I can't put it in the shop. Where is it? It's in the garage? No. I think it's in a storage unit. Okay. Not 100%. But I think I have it. You know what the best thing in the world is going to be? 
Having all your shit around? No, this little brush motor going right into my microphone. I'm really sorry for what's about to happen. How's my vertical on your axis? Uh, bring the top more that way. There you go. Okay. And let me check here. Come this way a little bit. There you go. Are you happy with that? Yep. Are you chucked in there straight? Because that's wobbling like mad. Yeah. Yeah, I am. It's bent. It's brand new, too. Oh, wow. Harbor Freight. It may or may not drill steel. I'm going to add a little lube. Here. Here. Feed a little bit? Well, I'm going to let you open it first. Oh, we're making a chip. Made two chips. Give me, give me a little drop of love in there. All right. Give me a little down the hole there. This, this drill bit is made of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so you need two holes, huh? I need two holes, and by God, we'll get two holes out of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're just going to do it nice and easy. Keep feeding a little longer. Uh -huh. That sounded crunchy. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just about to break through. So when you're just about to break through, ease up, because if you keep ramming, it's going to hang up, and on this little drill bit, we'll snap that thing right off. And we're through with a wisp of smoke. All right, that was fun. Got a little brush? I did, uh, yeah. yeah, I got chip brushes. Chip brush. Hey. I use them for painting. <laughs> <laughs> and the green bucket's the trash can right over there. All right, so we got that. That was the easy one. Because now we got to do that precisely 90 degrees off. Precisely, huh? The, the diagram says 90 degrees off. It's very specific on that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my NIST calibrated eyeball and set that to 90 degrees off axis. There, that is... It's exactly 90 degrees. I want to try that file set. All right. Unless you like have no, a, have don't a thing me. for it. Remember, it only cuts on the push. Yeah, but you can you can drag it back, and it's not going to hurt it. No, it's not going to hurt it, but it's not going to cut either. No, there's not. Have you ever seen the This Old Tony episode on, on filing? Uh, no. He, can't say I have. He did a whole thing on it. He's got a machine that files like a shaper it's it something like that it, it holds like special files and really yeah and you can like put things in it and move them around so it's like a uh oh, what's the the thing for wood that has like a guitar string for a blade oh um uh, uh it's it, yeah, it's kind of like a scroll saw. scroll saw yeah um but not it, it's very similar though but it's easy to take the thing out and it's it's much more beefier but you can use different files with it, and it holds the file in a special thing, and all that. And, and he goes into a whole thing on how it doesn't hurt the file to go back and forth. No, it, it just doesn't, doesn't do anything. Point. Right, exactly. Yeah. If you're going to spend the Lube energy, me. you might as well... Yeah. Now, we're using just regular 3-in-1 oil here. Whenever you're reading in a, like one of the old books, and they say, a light machine oil, they're talking about 3-in-1 oil, or sewing machine oil, it, same stuff. Or uh, pumice grade olive oil. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh, check for a vertical. 
I look good this way. What do you got that way? Uh, there. Go that way a little bit. There you go. God, that's bent to hell. Yeah, it doesn't really matter what I say because it's all... And I'm not like, I'm not putting any force on this. I'm putting about three pounds, maybe three, four pounds of push. Like it's really light because it's a tiny drill bit. Yeah, I'm not seeing it wobble out as you're leaning on it. It's wobbling out as it... Lube! Well, there goes that. Got a drill doctor? No, just file that fucker down. So I got a plan. We've broken the drill bit that was the right size. That was the 29? Yeah. Give me a 28. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, how big a difference can there be? Um, how many thou? You want me to read this off to you? Or, uh? No, um, actually, I have uh, in the metrology drawer, there should be a set of... Uh, um, what, what is the difference in numbers there? It's written right there. Four. Four thou? Four hundred. I can look at that. Huh? All right. Well, see? yeah, you want the metrology... Calipers? Those are so close that I wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Here, what do you, what do you got? It has to do with uh, how much energy can your tap deal with that's a, cutting. That's a proper for reals tap. All right, we're at zero millimeters there. And not how much energy, how much meat can your... Uh... So this is a 3.57 millimeter is the one, the new one. The one we just broke, which was the number 29, is 3.44. Okay. I think we'll live. And if not, that'll be fun too. Let's see if this drill bit is is like straight. Oh, it's better than the other one was. <laughs> That's saying a lot. Slap me with that lube, yo. This one cuts way better too. <laughs> First one cut okay on the the low on there. Hit it. It's beautiful. That's a better chip. So a thing of note, now there's whole books, in fact one of them's up there, there's whole books written on speeds and feed. Speeds is how fast your cutting bit is turning and feed is how fast you're pushing it into the thing. For just the general home gamer, basic rock simple stuff, as a rule, there are a billion exceptions, but as a rule, small drill bit turn faster, big drill bit turn slower. Just that's as a rule. If the drill bit is glowing, apply lubrication and slow down. All right, so we've got that done. Um, we can't really chamfer it because I got teeth in the way. So I'm not gonna worry about deburring the hole. Well, so do a slight. No, my deburring tool is huge compared to that. And it's gonna run into, cause, cause it's not flat, it's gonna hit the teeth. Ah. So I'm just gonna give her what for. So lube and lots of it. Now when you're tapping, lots of lube. On the tap. Yep, on the tap. And a little bit on the hole. All right, check us for vertical, sir. I look good this way, what do you got? Yeah, you're good. It's important to run the tap vertical into, the, or well, it's important to run the tap online to the hole because if you try and tap crooked, it, it'll start and then unpredictable things will happen. Breakage. Usually breaking the tap, yes. But how you get to breaking the tap is a study of several PhD dissertations. All of them involve really cool math and geometry and a lot of swearing because they break the tap. So you'll notice I'm doing it with just fingertip pressure, just super light pressure. Oh, and wow, that's thin. We're already through. So I'm going to go through until I feel the resistance of kissing the other side. So do you normally go forward three, back one, go forward three, yep. back one, yep. go forward three? Yeah, you okay. want to break chips. 
Usually. Yeah. If you're doing this in UHMW, just give her what for. <laughs> And also, and a really important lesson, the first real lesson I learned in tapping as a kid in my dad's shop, have a hand around the tap as you withdraw it, because if you drop it on the floor... It ends in tears. The yelling starts. Yeah. Yeah. So, don't drop the tap on the floor. They're really brittle. So just always have a hand on the tap. I'm going to blow this off. You can swap that 90. There really is no better way to clean a tap than an air gun because you want to get rid of all the little chips is good is good you want to do one no go ahead okay you're like no i don't want to break i don't want to break a tap on your camera <laughs> all right i'm good here what you got uh looks good okay no, I'm used to doing it, uh, running the tap down on a drill press. Yeah. I'm doing that's... it by hand. I've broken more taps. Oh, yeah. Doing it on a drill press, man. That's... It's going to be fine. Yeah. We only have one part, one tap, and it's on camera. What are well, the chances we break a tap? What are the chances we break a drill bit? <laughs> <laughs> so, depending on what you're tapping, we're tapping steel. Depending on how you're tapping it, like whether it's a, a bottoming tap or stuff like that, depending on a million different things, there's a lot of variation in how you tap stuff. But most of it all boils down to go slow, go gentle, and uh, keep everything in alignment. So the best way to do this is either on a lather and a drill press. And I can hand tap on a drill press too. It's actually kind of fun. You run a the quill down into the back of the the tap holder right, and you just turn and, it by hand and right yeah you just yeah okay but like i don't i've never tapped on a drill press by actually putting the tap in the chuck like a power tap yeah i've never i've never done that i've done it on a, a big cnc mill we had a power tapper but they were kind of a pain in the butt to set up right it was a lot easier just to set the tap in the truck and then turn it by hand we had the one that freaked me out was on one of our big CNC machines. We had rigid tapping. You Rig put the tap in a collet, you touch it off on the thing, and it just comes in with a tap rigidly mounted in a collet. No floating tap head at speeds that are terrifying, and it just <laughs> and you're like, whoa! That, that it one, does it. That one of the Haas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Haas will do it. Like all the big dogs will do it, but just <laughs> and you're like, whoa! It's really neat. First time you see it, it's terrifying. Oh, blow. That yeah, off. I had a gig at a little eyes. Machine. Yeah. No, I'm just. I'm about to shoot little metal particles into every computer in the room. So. Ah. We're gonna wait a moment. It's gonna fast forward through this part. Or, uh, nah, they'll just be edited out. Yeah. Nobody will ever see this. Ah. <sighs> All right, so we're drilled, we're tapped, we're good. We're at exactly 90 degrees. And now we take this out and we have to put grub screws in it. We have to wipe it off. Where's paper your shop towels? towels? I have, I have paper towels. I always have paper towels. What kind of low budget bullshit Mickey Mouse operation are we running here? All right, shop towel right there. There you go. That's great. Okay, so we're going to need M4 by 5 set screws. So we're looking for some M4 by 5 set screws. Are they going to be in that pile or this pile? I have no idea. Those Could go either way. Set screws. I'm three by four, three by three. I got your grubs there. Four by five. M four by five set screws. See, that's why you, you organize everything before you start. I will require, these are four, so I think it's a three millimeter Allen wrench. The grub cutter's labeling Allen wrench it is. There, make sure to get the Allens, not the Torx. I can tell the difference. Okay. I've been hurt before. 
What are we going to want? A um, couple head injuries. Does that uh, that explain it all? Or? A little bit. A little bit. I don't know. These fit. There are some floating around here. Let me see the grub screw. Let me, I, this might do it. Yeah. Well, it's not two and a half, so I need the two millimeter. Let me see one. You got a bunch of floating hey, around here. I, I, might, I might have one right here. Give me just a second. Yep, I got it. Nice T handle. Well, this is my fancy Bond House one. I wish I had a whole set of these. They're so cool. <laughs> so let's go over here. All right, so we've made our sprocket and we have our M4 by five millimeter set screws. Now, this is cool because th this is one of those things that like you really appreciate once you do it. We had a sprocket and we have made a threaded hole inside it. It's some of the most basic of metalworking, but look at that. Just a screw from the kit, which is not exactly centered. centered. <laughs> It'll be fine. So we want to back that out a little bit. It is admittedly, like you can feel that it's, it's just a touch loose in the hole because we went with yeah, it won't have as much thread contact, right? Yeah. And that's... But for this application, it's going to be fine. And this is definitely... A little tighter the, on the uh, bottom? Or? Yeah, this one's a little tighter on the bottom. This is definitely the, the first hole. Um, so we're going to use the first hole as our main engagement. And I'm just going to back this out. I'm looking inside the thing trying to see it and ignoring the fact that I have it on a screen right in front of me. I can see it right there. So we got a little schmoo in the hole that we got to clean out. Um, we're going to need something. Do I have Q-tips down here? Where's the shop rags? White gloves. That's not... No, uh, I can't use that. Hang on. I'll bet they got something next door. Hey! You never saw these, and these are never here. Uh, I, ain't, yep. I, I, don't I don't know, know nothing. I don't know, I don't know nothing. There might be a, a shop next door that is missing a roll of paper towels. It's okay. I know the owner. If, if you wake up dead in the river, I'll... Uh, I'll uh, you get my boat. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, okay. More projects. There you go. Because <laughs> you needed a boat. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I need yeah. another one. Yeah. I've already got three. <laughs> All right, so there, we're all clean and shiny and good. And now, for the final mojo, all we got to do is put this on the shaft. So the shaft has a key on top. Right. Now, we've got the two screws, and I'm going to make sure the, the one that's in the properly sized hole that's nice and tight. I'm make, oh, that's it. Yeah, you can definitely tell. Like, It'll work, but you can tell there's a difference. So we're going to put this on the shaft on here and run it down. And then we're going to deburr the holes on the inside because it won't slide on the shaft. And that's that may be a bit of a press fit, but I'm not 100%. Let's see if we can find some files. No, we're going to like round file it. Find you a red tail? Yeah. Do I own a rat tail file? Oh, 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 look at that, right there. That'll do. Half round? Might be whole round. Oh. It's all around. All right. All right. Let's make sure, yep, goes on like that, okay. All right, so we're gonna take a minute here and we're just gonna deburr this because it's, it's, it's good. Come back a little. It's good, but we're just going to grab a rat tail file here and just just clean up inside. All right, I think we're okay. I'm surprised how soft that uh, metal for the sprocket there was. It 
because you'd think that that's like tempered and heat treated. And, oh yeah, that slid right on. We're, we're happy now. Okay, so we got to slide this on and make sure that we're out just enough for the chain. And I think that's about where we want to be. I'm going to double check the manual just to be sure we got this right. And we can always make adjustments later when we're slapping on that other arm to yeah, make yeah. alignment. Yeah, this looks right. This It looks like it does in the book. So I think we're okay. So I'm just going to uh, bring this in on the side here. Well, I'm going to get the one down the keyway first. And I'm mounting it flush with the end of the shaft. Do not lock tight these when you do them because you may want to change it later. So I'm just going to put them in nice and snug. You don't you don't want to reef on this. Just be gentle. I wonder if that's something where uh, like a little bit of hard soap where you don't want the full Loctite but you do want a little bit of... Hard soap? Yeah. What's that? Like hand soap. Okay. You just take and scrape it on the scrape the threads on the on the soap and then run it in. Soap dries out. It's weak Loctite. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. That is super cool. All right. So we got a sprocket on there. That's looking cool. All right. I think we did it. All right. So we did a thing. Yeah, we're over on this camera now. You got to, yeah. it's like a little dance thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's it. That's episode 21. It's quick. It's easy. You put a sprocket on a thing. That, that was straightforward. We're here to entertain. Yeah. I'm Chris Bowden. That's Unos. And you're not. And thank you for hanging out with us. We're back with Project Archie. We're doing a whole series. Like this is there's gonna be like 50, 60 videos in this. It's looking pretty sweet so far. I like it. I'm really excited about the project. There's a lot more to go, and people are liking these videos way more than I expected. Well good. So that's Unos. Now you know, you've met him. <laughs> you guys have fun. We'll see you next time. Later. Project Archie main sink in three, 